Hello everyone. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've done a video. I've been traveling and all of that jazz. But I want to show you uh, quickly how to use the trifold shutter card die. Uh, it's really amazing to make these cards and it's so much simpler than it looks. So that is the die package. There are two sets of layering dies that come uh, or coordinate with it rather. Um, basically what you're going to have uh, is a card that does this here and opens like that. All right. And this one's been folded several times, so it kind of gets wonky on me because um, it's a display card. Uh, but I want to show you that's using layers number one, and I will go over the layers here as well. But real quickly, let's show you how you do the basic cut. So we have a cardstock here that is five and a half inches tall by 12 inches long. I know you can't see the ends of that in my video there. It's a little close. What you're going to do is you're going to bump the back edge of your cardstock up against something. I've added a white paper here because my black background, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, so you're going to bump this up against, I have a thick chipboard here. And uh, you know I'm a fan of stencil tape or blue painter's tape, removable tape of whatever kind, the least expensive. Um, you can see I just leave my tape on my die. Um, I have that in those four positions. I find it holds everything better. So what we're going to do is we are going to slide this back and we are going to bump it up against that chipboard and we're just going to make sure that it's centered side to side here and then press down on that tape. We'll slide this away and I'll double check that I'm even. Okay, I'll set that over here. I'm going to open up my machine. Of course I have that limited area. And my clasp is getting old here, so it doesn't want to open. All right, this is the Vagabond 1. The Vagabond 2 is out. Um, when this one croaks, if it does, I will get another one. So now we have that taped on. We're going to place that on the machine. And noise. Once it gets to the end of the cut, I can go ahead and return it back as long as I don't go beyond the end of the plates. I don't have a lot of room behind me, so this is how I manage to be able to cut uh, long things and not have to reach around to the back and get them. So here we'll untape the die, and you should be able to see the score lines in there as well as the cut lines. So what we're going to do, we'll close this again. Uh, we're going to rotate it around so you can see the cut lines were here. Now we're going to just rotate the paper. We're not going to flip it. We're just going to rotate it. and lay that down bumped up against here again so I'll just make sure I'm pressing down on that and it stays all right and then tape side down all right so we will slide this back against the chipboard there and I can see that the ends of my die I'll show this a little closer once I tape it I want to make sure I'm centered and that the ends of my die are ending up right there centered with that line. I'm a little bit crooked and I'll just show you how I can see that. And what happens is these little ends, they overlap, there we go, they overlap about an eighth of an inch of the cut. So it kind of fits down in the groove. And you can tell you've got it in the right place if you wiggle your thumbs and your fingers are on the back and it it stays in that previous little cut line. Okay, so we'll stick that down, make sure it's held in place. And I apologize, gotta open this machine again. There we go. All right, and always making sure, some new people have asked a couple of questions, always make sure you leave lead in or feed in space at the end um, where it goes into the machine because if it's too thick, it won't start in. And especially if you're in a hand crank machine, that causes a lot of trouble with your arms trying to get it to go in there. And then just press it up against there. You'll see it starts to catch. And now noise. One thing I do love about this machine, and you can buy it directly from Joanne or Amazon actually has it for $150 right now. Uh, one of the things I dearly love about this machine is the forward and reverse and the fact that it folds up so small. I don't have to have the space behind. It doesn't, it's not an electric machine that feeds all the way out the back. 
so that you constantly have to stand up and go get it. All right, so here we have, we see our cut. I got a teeny little tiny notch there, barely anything um, that's noticeable. Okay, so now we have our entire piece cut. And I'm gonna show you how you fold it now. So I'm gonna start by folding these two creases back and then uh, that makes them up a peak. Then the next two are a valley. We're gonna ignore the middle of the card. Now we have peaks and now we have valleys, okay? So you kind of have a little bit of a design going there. Now what you're gonna do is if this is a valley, this is a peak. And this here is a peak, that makes this, and you can reach through like this, a valley. So now you can see that our trifold is starting to take shape. Now I did make the mistake, I'll show you here, of folding this and folding this like that, completely done. And then I made the mistake of scoring on top of here. And you don't want to make that mistake because what happens is this will leave an indentation right in the middle of your strips. Now if you're putting layers on them, that's fine. It's going to cover it, although it does leave a little notch top to bottom. I don't care for that. So what I recommend is that you kind of work it a little bit. You find one place that you can close it and you lay it down and it's the only layer and then you bone folder there and here okay and then turn it around tuck let's see it takes a minute to play with it but you'll get it figured out it's never the same way twice anyway because you don't really concentrate on it as much but you can see here I'm not on top of any other pieces, so it's not going to cause uh, a problem. Now this is on top of its edge here, so that's not going to cause a problem with scoring it. Okay, and then we'll turn it around, and what do I not have scored? These two here aren't scored, so, or excuse me, they are scored, they're just not creased, bone foldered, whatever. All right, and then just sometimes when you do that, you don't get it exactly aligned, so I flatten it, and then I just give it a, a once-over, being careful to stay away from these middle creases because I don't want gigantic bumps right in the middle of the card, so I did a good job this time. I don't have great big creases in it. So this is now our trifold shutter card base, okay? And that is your basic cut and fold for the trifold shutter. Now I have three different things I want to show you here. None of these are how I would make an actual completed sample. You can see the completed samples in the gallery. Um, so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to begin with layers number one. Okay, trifold shutter card layers number one. You get three each of each piece that goes into the section. So you get three different sizes. Now. Uh, hopefully you can see this edge here. What happens with layers number one is they start a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge of the card. So it's a really narrow edge to the card. And then each layer is going to step in by a sixteenth of an inch for each section. So if you want one eighth inch layers, then this is going to give you that. And they are going to start one sixteenth of an inch away from the edge of the card. So fold it up, it would look like that. Okay. Now, if you were going to do layers number two, and I know they look identical, there's not a lot of difference that you can see there, um, but if you were to take the dies out of the package, they are slightly different sized. So now here, I hope you can see, uh, let's see if I can zoom in on here. Oh, it won't let me zoom on the video. Okay, so what it is here is layers two, they start an eighth of an inch away. That means the biggest layer out of set one and the biggest layer out of set two, they're actually a sixteenth of an inch difference in size. And the reason for that is that when you crisscross layer one from this set, layer one from this set, you're going to get a sixteenth of an inch difference. So basically, if you were to use all of the layers, you're going to end up with this. You're going to end up with a sixteenth of an inch from the edge of the card, and then you're going to end up a sixteenth of an inch from each layer. So all the white layers on here come from layers number one. All the black layers come from layers number two. 
Now I do offer a combo and it is 20% off if you buy the card base die and layers one and two. Um, that's going to be a 20% off price. So instead of paying $25 for each set, you pay $20. It saves you $15. Okay. Now let's say that you don't have $60 and you just wanted to get two of them. I would recommend then um, that you get layers two because layers two starts a six, uh, excuse me, an eighth of an inch away from the edge and each layer steps in an eighth of an inch. So you can see how that gives you symmetry. The amount showing around each section on the card is the same as each step as the dies come in. So that's the most symmetrical if you were to do the sets. And I know it seems odd that it would be uh, layers two instead of layers one, but layers one is always the largest and layers two is always the smallest. So that's how they end up getting named that way and done that way. All right, and so this is one way that you would decorate it. Um, some people also cut this section in a T or a sideways T, half of an H maybe, two thirds of an H. Um, I have been requested to make layers for right here. We will be doing a set of those and uh, hopefully get those done soon. Um, but uh, I just wanted to, to let you know that that is how the base die functions to make your card base. It does require the two cuts. And I wanted to thank both Debbie McKenzie uh, for re-inspiring me to make this die and Heather Alvarez. Heather asked me in 2012 to make this die and I was really new at designing them myself and I couldn't quite get it figured out. All the ones on the market used a 17 inch long piece of paper or a 14 inch long piece of paper and none of us have that at our disposal. Uh, so I was finally able to make it so when this is folded it is four by five and a half as your card. So it still fits a standard A2 envelope. And then stay tuned, I am going to show you how you can add the A2 layers, uh, one and two, to make an even different uh, card, card front for your trifold shutter card. Thank you for joining me. I hope this has cleared up some of the questions everyone has. I apologize that the video was so late in coming. I've been packaging dies and, and sending out orders. So have a wonderful day and I hope you'll join me again soon. Bye-bye.